Former President Donald Trump dropping his biggest hints yet. He plans to run in 2024. His rally in Iowa last night feeling a whole lot like the campaign trail. He's teasing a new-ish campaign slogan, Make America Great Again, again. And, of course, reimagining the 2020 election in the way only he can. First of all, he didn't get elected. Okay, forget that. <laughs> but some people said, oh, sir, it was COVID. Hillary conceded. I never conceded. Never. When you hear these numbers of swing states, there was no reason to concede. They should have conceded. And no presidential candidate has ever lost an election while winning Florida, Ohio, and a place called Iowa. First time it's ever happened. He says he never conceded. That's in part because he is conceded, uh, in addition to being deluded. Uh, his ego simply unable to tolerate loss or a shred of truth, and that explains his next statement. It's the single biggest issue, the issue that gets the most, the most pull, the most respect, the biggest cheers, is talking about the election fraud of 2020 presidential election. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. So he just gave away the big lie. Did you catch that there? He is admitting that his election lies are ego juice, just there to pump up the crowd, the very stuff that fueled the insurrection. And by now, we know he'll take those crocodile tears, uh, the big lie is the big cry, of course, as we said before, all the way to the bank and perhaps to the 2024 election. For more on this, I'm joined by CNN senior political analyst John Avalon, who is also the host of the new CNN digital series, Reality Check Extremist Beat, and CNN political commentator and host of PBS Firing Line, uh, Margaret Hoover. Um, guys, uh, thanks as always for being with us. Uh, Trump's 2024 teasers are beginning to feel like infrastructure week. Um, I guess they just happen over and over again. They never really come to fruition. but. You know, this this may actually happen. He's sounding more and more like a contender, uh, despite, you know, all of those lies that he tells over and over again. Jim, he's in it to win it. Let's not, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Let's not fool ourselves. Well, um, a lot of Republicans are, winning, by the way. But... No, no, but he's, well, <laughs> as we know, he'll claim that he won it, even if he didn't. So, Fair enough. But, yeah. but I think this is a really serious point, Jim, because there are a lot of Republicans who still look me in the eye Serious Republicans who were office holders, various levels of, of federal government, who say he's not going to run, and they have some kind of justification. But if you look at every single thing he says and every single thing he's doing, which includes putting the team back together and having his, his pack going and basically saying everything he can legally without triggering a campaign violation, he has said that he's running. So we don't, you got to take him for his word. This man is running, and he still owns the Republican Party. Republicans need to get their head out of the sand and start dealing with it. Yeah, out of something, the sand or other places, John. Yeah, well, you know, as I said in Reality Check last week, that, you know, the symbol of the Republican Party is no longer the elephant. It should be the ostrich. Um, I sort of borrowed because that from you. I appreciated that. But that, it was kind of made me laugh. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, but the, but the reality, of course, is that it, it's deadly serious. And it's not just yeah. people who are in denial about Donald Trump running. It's all these Republicans whose silence is effectively complicity in this effort to overturn an election. You know, because if, if look, if, if, if trying to overturn an election isn't wrong, isn't disqualifying, nothing is. And every single Iowa Republican who stood on the stage that night with Donald Trump is complicit is complicit out of fear, out of a desire to get some benefit from his base. They are complicit in an effort to overturn an election and to have that cancer metastasize inside the Republican Party and the Republic itself, which is what is happening right now. Yeah, and, he, and they're normalizing what he did after the 2020 election in the run up to January. So they are normalizing it and sanitizing it by being up on that stage with him. And the fact that he goes out and blurts out in front of the crowd uh, that, oh, by the way, when I talk about this election stuff, that's what gets most of you guys all fired up. I mean, he's just out there admitting what he's doing yeah. here. But, uh, you know, Senator Mitch McConnell has become this was the other thing that just stood out to me last night. He's become one of Trump's go-to targets this year. Here is Trump attacking Mitch McConnell again last night. Mitch McConnell didn't have the courage to challenge the election. He's only a leader because he raises a lot of money and he gives it to senators. That's the only thing he's got. That's his only form of leadership. He should have challenged the election. What do you make of that, Margaret? 
Jim, the only thing Mitch McConnell didn't have the courage to do was to encourage his Republicans in the Senate to actually vote to convict because right. they had way more than 10 that were ready to go. And if they had had the courage to do it, Donald Trump would not be on a stage right now naming him in infamy. Donald Trump would not be a threat to the Republic. That was Mitch McConnell's. It was in Mitch McConnell's hands. And instead, we exiled him. We sent him to Elba. That's a Napoleon reference. Uh, and, and he's coming back. In case you missed it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's such an important point because McConnell tried to walk that line. Um, he knew what Trump did was wrong. It's the opposite of not having courage. He had the courage to condemn Donald Trump, but not to take the final step that could have disqualified him for future office um, under Article uh, the 14th Amendment, Section 3. And by pulling that punch and by still trying to like play footsie with the fanatics in the party, they create the conditions they're dealing with now. Gollum always turns on its creator. That is what Mitch McConnell is learning. That's what every Republican should know by now. And if they don't, they'll learn it soon enough. Yeah, and, and we still have these high-ranking Republicans clinging to this idea that President Biden's victory was illegitimate, or at least f fueling that belief uh, inside the Republican base. And I, maybe you saw this earlier today, Congressman S Steve Scalise, the number two House Republican earlier this morning. Let's watch. I mean, it, it's painful to watch, but let's watch. At the end of the day, are we going to follow what the Constitution says or not? I hope we get back to what the Constitution says, but clearly in a number of states, they didn't follow those legislatively. So you think rules. the election was so I, I, stolen? What I said is there are states that didn't follow their legislatively set rules. That's what the United States Constitution says. Last time, I promise, do you think the election was stolen or not? I understand you think there were irregularities and things that need to be fixed. Do you think the election was stolen? Yeah. And it's not just irregular, it's states that did not follow the laws set, which the Constitution says they're supposed to follow. This voting irregularity thing, this voter integrity, it's just phony baloney nonsense. It's just nonsense. It's much worse than that. And to invoke the Constitution as a way of deflecting from an attempt to undercut and undo and attack the Constitution is disgusting. It's pathetic. Scalise knows better, and he's a coward for not being willing to say it. What Scalise is doing, though, Jim, I mean, let's not lose the lesson. Scalise is representing the views of Republican primary, self-identified Republican primary voters who I have seen in focus group after focus group say, yeah, there were probably voting irregularities. And they start to use the term the Constitution and undermining the Constitution as shorthand for something that was unfair to Donald Trump. Right. And so, right. and so we're actually not talking about the Constitution, but, but this is what a, a solid part of the Republican Party, the base of the Republican Party believes. And so that also has to be factored in as we deal with the very real pros prospect that Donald Trump is coming back. And if you want to win at the ballot box, you have to understand what his voters are thinking if you're going to have a prayer at trying to persuade some of them not to turn out to vote for him. And, and all they do is project the term they're guilty of on the other guy. It's project yeah. and deflect. That's what they're yeah. doing right there. And I, I want to ask you about uh, this, guys, because I, last night I spoke with Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn, who is just, could not be a, a, a nicer, sweeter guy. I mean, what, he is a great guy. And I asked him about people like Tucker Carlson, who are still portraying the January 6th attack as some sort of peaceful event with tourists. And, everything. and it, that is so appalling. Put that to the side for a moment. But let's listen to what uh, Officer Dunn had to say. When they show that clip, how did they get in that Capitol? How'd they get in there? The, the door, we didn't just let them in. It was a fight. They fought their way through layers and layers of security to get there. It's, it's coincidental that they just show that particular footage. Show the footage leading up to that. How about that? That clip that you just showed there, them spraying us and fighting us and hitting us with poles. Show that clip. What do you got to say about that? Why, why do you think they're not showing that on Fox? It goes against their narrative. It goes against their narrative. And the, the whole thing about with Tucker Carlson, he had some words about me. Um, have me on your show. I'll go on. They want to talk about you, not to you. Uh, Margaret, I, I, I have the feeling that guys like Officer Dunn are just, they're just angry. They're just upset that not only are, they, are we seeing like rioters getting slaps on the wrist and and Trump and his associates trying to get off sky free, but this this uh, deliberate attempt on Fox to whitewash what took place. 
Yeah, I mean, Fox, that show, Tucker Show, is is deliberately doing that. Um, it's not universally done across the board at Fox, but the truth is, <laughs> Jim, I condemn and can't stand what Tucker is doing, but Tucker is the least of it. Most Republican primary voters aren't watching Fox News anymore. They're on OAN, they're on Newsmax, they're on other channels that definitely aren't showing him. And I was with a Republican member of the House of Representatives uh, this week who told me her the the most traction she gets from her voters is is from those channels the other ones not Fox and Facebook all right so so <laughs> I know Fox is in the wrong here but but it's way worse than just one network but it, but it's created the ecosystem right and that's why look you know we need to take this seriously right now you know congress needs to pass the electoral count act there needs to be accountability through the january 6th commission to hold rioters accountable and, and any members of congress who played footsie with this stuff there needs to be accountability that may, leaves a mark otherwise we will have this again and we need to take steps to stop the next one now